I don't know what you could have expected. Um, a lot of people are bitter. Saw it all over Twitter Friday morning. <coughs> Why didn't they take Jalen Carter? Why'd they keep Carter behind? Who's going to be the better pick, Ranked or Carter? And we should really start there because that's going to be an ongoing debate throughout this offseason and over the years to come, who should the Bears have taken? I don't care if Carter does great in the NFL. I don't care if he sacks 20 guys per season and turns out to be this superstar or generational talent. The fact is, I will not blame Ryan Poles for passing on him. Ever. And you shouldn't either. I saw people asking, why did they pass? Why did they move back? Why did they take some offensive linemen, not a shiny, new, exciting pick? Says the same people are going to complain as to why Justin Fields was sacked 60-plus times. Jalen Carter, and I'll say this again, showed up to the combine, 15 pounds overweight, couldn't finish his drills, and yes, has criminal charges outstanding. Okay? Do you really want somebody like that on your team? And we said this before. We said this weeks in advance. The Bears were not going to take him, not because of even his performance. The Bears do not like off-the-field issues. They never have, and they never will, even with a new GM, new president. At the end of the day, same ownership, same idea. They're not taking somebody with outstanding criminal stuff, attorney stuff, off-the-field issues. They don't do it. And when it happens, players are cut automatically. Remember Sam Hurd? said this last time. Remember Sam Hurd? Promising young wide receiver gets arrested for cocaine distribution and all of a sudden, hours later, cut from the team, just got out of prison last year. That was back in 2013. The Bears do not deal with poor choices off the field. Many teams don't. Some do. Eagles do. Good for them. Somebody commented saying, oh, the Eagles are getting richer. You know what? If the Eagles are getting richer and taking Jalen Carter, good for them. Good luck in dealing with whatever is going to happen to them off the field and even on the field with Carter. they got to get him into shape. they got to hope that his criminal charges go away. I mean, there are going to be so many things that they have to invest in to get him better. And the Eagles are willing to do that. Good for them. Bears are better for them. The Bears are a growing team. They still have to prove themselves this year and in the years to come. They don't need somebody like that holding them down. They don't need somebody like that in the back of their heads having to worry about it. The Bears are a clean organization. For all the problems that they have, for all the issues that they have organizationally, ownership-wise, problems on the field, not winning too much, they really don't have a problem when it comes to players off the field. A lot of their guys are actually stand-up people. And that's more important than anything, in my opinion. The Bears don't need extra distractions or extra legal issues or extra problems. They're probably spending millions on lawyers trying to get Arlington Heights finalized, as it is. They don't need another player causing them even more of a problem, let alone the the fact that they're growing. They're going to be a better team this upcoming season, and they need to figure out how things are going to go and be ready to win 8, 9, 10 games this year. They don't need Jalen Carter sitting out for games due to suspensions, being in jail, potentially, and then having to lose weight and really get after him in regards to being ready for game day. The most wise decision, the most shrewd shrewd decision, the most polls decision was made by Ryan Poles. It was a polls decision. We've gotten to know Ryan Poles a little bit. Hasn't been here long, but we understand tendencies about him. He's very shrewd, very logical, very wise. Does not jump the gun. Does not go crazy or make impulsive decisions. He's always <laughs> he's always willing to wait and listen and learn before he makes a decision. The nerve of some people to complain that they did not get Jalen Carter is ridiculous to me. I saw a prominent Chicago sports radio host saying it was the wrong choice or wasn't the choice I would have made. Somebody said, well, how could you be pissed about this? He's like, oh, I'm not mad about Darnell Wright, but it's just not the choice I would have made. But yet that same person is going to complain week one of the season when Justin Fields gets sacked ten times. 
can have it both ways. There were needs on both sides of the football. The Bears did what they should have done, what they did do, protect the quarterback. This is actually a further referendum and further proof that the Bears love Justin Fields. They decided not to go defense. They decided to neglect defense in the first round because they want somebody to really protect Justin Fields, and they did it. It's an investment in your quarterback. See, we get this all mixed up sometimes. Investing in your quarterback's not giving up $200 million like in Jalen Hurts or Lamar Jackson all the time. Sometimes you show that you're investing in your quarterback by getting in other key pieces that are going to help them improve. Justin Fields' old line was one of the worst in football. They might have been the best at run blocking or the best according to PFF, but the fact is Justin Fields got killed and sacked way too many times last year. They needed offensive line help. So what did Ryan Poles do? I believe in Justin Fields. We're not taking a quarterback. We're going to trade back, and we're getting an offensive lineman. There was an investment there in Justin Fields, indirectly. Important to know. Goes to show there's confidence, approval, and praise and expectations for Fields come this year. It's going to be harder for Fields and company and anybody else to say, hey, Fields had no line. No. Hey, Darnell Wright gave up no sacks and eight pressures in all of 2022, plus played left guard and right guard. Actually volunteered to move over on the line. True story. How about a team player? How about somebody who you know can protect you? How about somebody who's willing to be competitive and play hard and give results at the same time? I like somebody like that better than Jalen Carter. In fact, it's a character issue, too. Don't all right, team player. I'm going to move sides to help out my team. I want to protect my quarterback at all costs. Team guy. Cares about his team. Cares about his quarterback. Jalen Carter, meanwhile, selfish, getting in trouble off the field, and yet that's the guy the Bears should have drafted. Probably going to cost more money, too frankly. What would you have done? (laughs) Seriously, what would you have done? Ryan Pauls hit this one out of the park. I don't care what anybody says. You could lament about Jalen Carter all day. I don't want anything to do with him. And the Bears made the right choice in taking Darnell Wright. See what I did there? Right choice, right choice. No pun. No pun intended there. According to PFF, Wright allowed no sacks and just eight pressures in 2022, but going up against some of the best pass rushers in the SEC. In fact, Wright seemed to elevate his game against fierce competition. Now he's going to come in and protect the Bears' most valuable asset, Justin Fields. This was an investment in Fields. (laughs) Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. No, the Bears neglected the center position. That would have been a further investment in Justin Fields. They didn't get an edge rusher. Okay, tough luck, but they did get a particular and important offensive lineman who has a track record of protecting his quarterback. All year long, all of my guests on this show, you heard it all throughout the Chicago sports media landscape. What do the Bears need? Offensive line. What do they need? Build the trenches. What do they need? Protection for Fields. He has it now. Different ways to say it, but everything meant the same. Justin Fields needs time to throw the football, and he can't be getting sacked 60 times a year. Well, here's your answer. And yet, for some, apparently it wasn't good enough. Now, you guys call me negative sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what, I was very happy about this pick. For those who weren't or who really wanted Jalen Carter, I ask you why. And why is that a problem even today when this team still improved with a big pick at number 10, not 9? I'm in this for improvement. All of us are. We're in this to see this team improve and get better and not be near the cellar in the NFC North. This pick will help them. And not be flashy or exciting or, oh, who's Darnell Wright? He is a quality offensive lineman. Somebody you could trust and somebody who's going to protect Justin Fields. And if he doesn't, nobody could predict that either, right? If he turns out to be a big flop or a bust, I can't blame Ryan Poles on that. According to tape... And numbers and perception around the league, (laughs) he's a very good player. Nothing else you could say about it. 
So please don't, you know, don't worry about the Jalen Carter thing. I, I would advise everybody to move on from it and look at what the Bears did instead. Look at who they drafted and look at why they took somebody like Wright. That's exciting. Ryan Poles also said in a press conference this past week that he can't fill all the holes right away. Fair point. Correct point from Poles. Can't fill everything right away. Going to definitely take time to get better. I've talked about this a hundred times. You try to stay disciplined, do the right thing, and not panic and do something that's going to hurt us down the road. And Paul said we can't fix everything at a high level in one swoop. Bears still have money. Free agency still going on. There are players out there who are unsigned. There are trades that could still be made. This is not over. Yes, they need an edge rusher. Yes, they need a center. Yes, there are other positions on their team that could improve greatly, sure. But through the draft, the Bears actually addressed a lot of issues. A lot of scary things. And Darnell Wright was the first-round pick for a reason because that was the Bears' number one problem. I would rather have a a offensive lineman that's going to be reliable than an edge rusher right now over the Bears. Why? Justin Fields is your most important asset. Enough said. If this was the 2006 Bears, okay, yeah, defense is going to be their important asset. You draft an edge rusher. This is a new team. In a new era of football. <laughs> Even heard Dave Wanstead on the score say, I would have went defense first. That's such an old man mentality. I am an old man, I would know. But that's just such an old man, you know, non-offense first mentality. And that's who the Bears have been for 100 plus years, and that's fine. I, I like the defensive first attitude, but in this case, you have a generational, potentially, quarterback, You have assured him you're not going to move up to take somebody else. You're not going to trade him. You're not going to trade picks to get the quarterback of your choice. You're keeping Justin Fields. So then guess what? You have to invest in him. You have to show everybody that he's going to be the guy. And doing something like this with Wright indirectly says to everybody, hey, Justin Fields is our guy. We need to protect him. We need to show that he is a priority for us and show him that we respect him enough to protect him. Because frankly... You could argue there was no respect for Justin Fields the past two years. Certainly not with Matt Nagy, putting him in getting sacked seven times in his debut. Debut game, really. Right? No respect, no care, no worry about protecting him. This is the first time somebody stood up for Justin Fields and said, you know what, we're going to help you out. First time through the draft. Last year, we didn't even see that too much. Poles was... Brought in late, had to really quickly turn it around and drafted a couple of guys. Nobody really worked out amazingly. This year, Poles had a full year watching Justin Fields, knew what he needed, and said, you know what, Justin? I'm going to help you. Nobody else has helped you. I'm going to help you. And he did. And that is huge. That should be celebrated. That should be exciting to every Bears fan. Hey, there's a GM in town who prioritizes the quarterback, who prioritizes offense, who cares a lot about this quarterback's safety and well-being. Because if Justin Fields doesn't play, this team's screwed. And I like P.J. Walker as a backup, but come on, guys. P.J. Walker versus Justin Fields, not even close. I love this. And I think Ryan pulls again. Hit it out of the park and made this work. Of course, the first round isn't the only round we're going to cover. We're going to go through each pick right now and give you a quick synopsis and an idea of what the Bears did right and did wrong, how this player will fit into the Bears' plans. But I'm touching out Darnell Wright a lot to start, not only because he was in the first round, but because there was so much controversy of should it be Carter or should it be Wright. And I want to make it very clear, at least on my program, all of you watching, we are our Darnell Wright supporter. I never supported Jalen Carter. I don't care what he does in football. doesn't matter to me. The Bears do not have the time nor resources to sit there and cuddle somebody who has so many issues off the field, who's immature, and who showed up 15 pounds overweight. 
you got to be ready as an NFL player, as a college player entering the NFL. Excuse me. You're not just going to show up, waltz in, and hey, I'm a top pick. No, that's dumb. That happened to Ryan Leaf, to Marcus Russell. How'd that work out for them? Hey, I'm a top pick. I'm so good. Yeah, you're out of the NFL in two years. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Jalen Carter. But if he doesn't learn from his, his mistakes, it may happen. Yes. Why take that risk if you're Ryan Paul's first full year, first full opportunity to draft? Why take a project who may or may not work out? I don't care what his potential is. Too many problems to even justify taking him. The fact that he went at nine is unbelievable to me. Not worth it. So I want to make that very obvious to everybody who's tuning in or just hopping in right now. Darnell Wright was a good pick. And the Bears passing on Jalen Carter was outstanding. 